All right, uh, we'd like to discuss refraction now. We have a lot of vocab terms. Um, refraction, a lot of these vocab terms sound the same, actually. Uh, in the last video, we talked about reflection. That's when light bounced off of a barrier. Um, when we were talking about compression waves earlier, we talked about rarefactions. Those are the spread out portions of a compression wave, like a trough, rarefactions. Um, here in another video, pretty soon, we're going to talk about diffraction. That's the spreading of waves through an opening or around a barrier. But this is refraction, refraction. And this is the bending of light as it goes from one medium uh, to the next at an angle. We talked in the last video about going from one medium to the next, but we didn't go at an angle. We went straight in along the normal, um, right into a new medium. And we saw how it would reflect um, at, the at the barrier. So whenever you go from, a, from one medium to a new medium, you do have some reflection. But if you go at an angle, some of the light will continue to go in, and, and we want to have, um, or waves will go in, and we'll have refraction. So if we look at this little animation here, um, um, what we have is we have an incident ray. And I'm going to try to draw on this thing a little bit. We have an incident ray. Of, of light coming in in this one medium like this and these we have you see the wave fronts coming along like this what happens at this barrier so there here's medium one up here is medium one and here's medium two they have different impedances as we talked about in the last video okay um, and one of them has a higher impedance than than the other so uh, and the one that has the higher impedance is uh, down here uh, below this has a high impedance and this one has a low impedance. And so what happens to the wave front as it gets to the boundary here? So what I like to think about is I, I like to think about, let's see if I kind of redraw this over here and, and I draw in the normal line. And we have, we have waves coming in like this right here at this point. I like to think about these as like being dumbbells. You're rolling dumbbells. This is like, a, this is like linoleum and this is shag carpet. Okay, and you're rolling a dumbbell along the floor. What's going to happen when it gets right here to this point? Okay, well this part is in the sh this part over here is in the shag carpet, and it's going to slow down. But this part is still on the linoleum; it still can go fast. So what happens is, th is this thing uh, basically changes changes direction. This thing can go faster. This is going slow, and then now this thing will reflect refract sorry out um, differently. So it'll come in like this, and instead of going kind of straight on, it'll actually bend the light. That's what refract means. It means bending. So it's going to bend. Uh, if it's going like this, and it's going to bend this way, we call that bending towards the normal. This is the normal line. So it this angle got smaller, right? It bent towards, instead of going straight off like this, it bent towards the normal. So whenever you go from um, low to high, you're going to bend or refract towards the normal, towards the normal. What if I was going from, um, this? let's say this is high and this is low, and I got my normal line here, and I have my wave coming in like this, my dumbbell rolling along. Right here, what's going to happen? Well, here it's in the low, so it's going to go around faster. Here it's not going to go as, here it's not going to go as fast. And so it's going to bend and kind of come off this way. So it comes in this, and then it bends off like this. And you'll see that that bent away from the normal. Here's the normal line. It bent away from the normal. So when you go from high to low, you bend away from the normal. Those are the things you got to remember for this particular thing. Low to high, bend towards the normal. High to low, bend away from the normal. Okay, so um, that's kind of the way that that's uh, working. Um, let's look at uh, let's look at some other things here. Let's look at uh, this light right here. So here I have a uh, a flashlight, and up here I have air on the top, and I have uh, there's air up here on the top, and then down here I have uh, some water. And uh, if I turn the light on. Um, you see nothing happen because it's coming down along normal. 
So it, the refraction is not going to occur unless it comes in at an angle. So it's going to come here. There's actually some reflection happening back on here, but you can't really tell that. And there's refraction happening, but it's just going straight in. Um, now, water uh, has a higher impedance than air does. Now, what we actually call these in this thing is called index of refraction. So we have clear, transparent things that the light can go through. We have, they're called index of refraction. But the index of refraction of water is like 1.33, and the index of refraction of air is actually defined to be 1. So this is a higher impedance down here for the water. So uh, if reflection does occur here, it's that going from a low to a high, and the reflection here, of course, will be uh, fixed, and so it'll be uh, 180 degrees out of phase if it reflects. But um, I can actually turn on the waves so you can see what they look like. So you'll notice here that uh, in here, the wavelengths are smaller than they are here, right? You see that? Because the velocity of the wave is going to be slower down here. The frequency is still the same, the same amount of waves per second every time. But the velocity is going to be less. So if the velocity goes less and the frequency stays the same, the wavelength would actually have to drop. So the wavelength between these two little light waves are uh, smaller here. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's turn it back to a ray for a second. Now let, let's let's come in at an angle. Start coming in at an angle. What do you see happen? Okay, so now we see the light beam coming in, and then we see that it refracts. It refracts down. Some of it reflects, as as always. Some of it reflects. And now this, of course, would be reflecting. It'd actually be 180 degrees out of phase. You can't really tell that on this particular thing. Okay. But this uh, would refract. If I do the waves on here, you'll see that it makes sense. Like think of these as dumbbells coming along here. And then right here, this, this part of the dumbbell is stuck in the water. So it goes slower. And this part here can uh, speed up, right? So it pivots and it turns, turns this way. Um, if I were to draw on this here, my, this, this is the angle of incidence. And this here is the angle of... Uh, uh, refractance. It's the refractive uh, angle. Okay. Um, now, of course, in the law of reflection, angle angle I equaled angle R, right? So that was the law of reflection. But this is refraction. These aren't going to be uh, equal, obviously. Okay. And there is a law, and we're not going to get to it this year, but I thought maybe some of you'd like to know it. It's called Snell's law. It's an actually pretty easy law. Snell's law that relates these angles to each other. And they're, of course, related to the index of refraction n of these things. The, the law is pretty easy. It's uh, um, n1 times the sine of angle i equals n2 uh, times the sine of angle r. So if you take the sine of this angle um, times this 1.33, that should equal the sine of this angle times 1. So... Snell's law is a pretty easy uh, law to do, but we're not going to do any math with that. But if you wanted to know it, uh, there you go. You got that. Okay. Um, all right, good. What, what, if I, what if I change this thing up here to also, uh, um, this thing up here to also be uh, water? Well, if they're the same exact uh, impedance, there, there's no, reflect, no refraction at all. Right, so um, it it just keeps going through. It's the same. It's the same exact medium. The only time you're going to have this refraction is when you go from one medium into um, another type of a, a medium. I could go from water into uh, glass, and glass has an impedance of 1.5. Uh, water is 1.3, so it's going from a low to high, and of course it bends towards the normal again. Okay, uh, what if it goes from water into air somehow? Okay, um, whoops. Okay. All right, so um, let's see. We have Ray. Um, I think what happens here. Okay, now this is interesting to watch. We have complete, um, complete internal reflection. Watch what happens. See, there's a critical angle. Watch, watch, watch what happens. Look at that. Right there, I have refraction. This is really interesting. So. This is, there, there's a certain angle, and we, we figured out later with that at law I just mentioned, but we won't do it right now. There's a certain angle that if you get to, you have complete internal uh, reflection. Complete internal reflection. 
Okay, so this, by the way, that's how they make, uh, they, they cut diamonds, like for your diamond ring, they cut certain faces in the diamond so that you get internal reflection. Light goes in, and it basically it can't get back out. It's kind of like captured in there because all the angles are cut so that the, um, the light trying to get back out will, will do this. We'll have internal reflection, so, and then that light will come back out and go out to maybe the top of the diamond. So that's why diamonds sparkle. They look really kind of cool, okay? All right. Um, so you'll notice here, though, that as it's going from the water to the air, it's reflecting away from the normal because it's going um, into a lower impedance. And I can put the waves on there to make sure we see that. See, it's coming like this, and then all of a sudden this gets into the uh, air, and uh, it's going to go um, a lot faster than what this is here in the water, and so it's going to bend this way and go um, away from the normal. Um, let's see what else can we do? Make this air. Uh, this is water. See, it bends towards the normal. But if I make this glass, it bends even more towards the normal because it even has a higher impedance. Um, mystery A. Ooh, mystery A. Mystery A. All right, what's, what's mystery A? What is N? Well, you, you could use that equation to figure it out because you can measure these angles and stuff. But uh, what do we, I just want to know, what is this uh, medium? It, does, it has a higher impedance or a lower impedance than this one up here, than air. Yes, it would have a higher impedance, right? And it's actually higher than uh, water and higher than glass because it bent even more towards the normal. And look at the wavelength. The wavelengths are really small now. So the impedance of the velocity is really, really low through this, through this uh, particular medium. Okay. I don't know what the there isn't. Is there an, there's not an internal angle that we can get that to go in. Okay. Um, mystery B. I don't know what that is either. Uh, what else? Yeah, custom. What can I do? Oh, I can change whatever I want. I can just change the medium. Look, as I lower the medium, right? As I lower the medium, it bends more and more away from the normal. And if I get all the way down to air, um, it's just going to be going straight through, right? So there's not going to be any refraction um, at all. Okay. Um, I think that might be all I will show you on that. I think you, you don't actually have to know the law. Um, we're not doing any math on this. You just need to know that if it goes from one type of medium to another, how it would bend. Would it bend away from the normal? Would it bend towards the normal? Or would it not even refract? Would it go um, straight on through? Now remember, refraction only occurs when you're coming in to the medium at, a, at an angle. If you come in along the normal, there is no refraction. It's just going to go straight on in. Hopefully that makes sense. Refraction is why sometimes we kind of see some kind of strange things. Um, it also helps us to be able to uh, um, go fish hunting. I don't know if you, any of you have ever went fish hunting. Yeah, where you actually, you know, have a gun and you try to uh, shoot fish in the water. So um, uh, what you need to know about fish hunting is that um, if there's a, uh, a fish, if there's a fish down here under the water and you... Uh, try to um, aim at him, okay? Um, you try to aim straight at him like this, you look like this. The the uh, um, the bullet um, is is will assume that will assume wouldn't be exactly maybe correct, but the bullet will pretty much go will go straight, okay? So um, if there's a if there's a fish like uh, um, I shouldn't have had the fish there I should have had the fish uh, have the fish like down here if so if, if there's a fish here okay so there's light coming off of the fish basically not the fish isn't making light but light's bouncing off of the fish uh, light would be coming off in all different directions okay and this particular light beam right here coming off here when it comes right here see it refracts out like this. Okay, so um, so you, here might be your eye, right? Here's your eyeball, and you're seeing you're seeing the fish, you know, because it's coming like here. But what, where do you actually see the fish? Your your brain thinks that everything that you've seen, because you since the day you've been born, 
you've basically lived in one medium, just air, right? So if you try to reach out right now and grab something, your brain tells you that it's actually in a straight line, and you can reach straight out along your eye, the vision, the sight line, and it'll be there, and you can grab it. The problem is, is when there's when there's two mediums between your eye and the object you're looking at, then the light can refract in between there. So when you see, when you look along this line, you're seeing the fish along this line. But if you reached out right along this line and tried to grab the fish, you wouldn't grab it. You actually see a virtual fish. There's a virtual fish here that you see. The fish is actually down here. So if you tried to shoot a bullet along this line, you'd miss the fish. See, it would go over the top of the fish. So whenever you're looking down into the pond and a fish and you're trying to shoot it, you would see it here. You actually need to aim. Uh, you need to actually aim uh, below it. You need to actually aim below it. Okay. So it's very, uh, very kind of confusing. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that you can uh, do with this refraction. You know, if you ever went and like watch a, see a crocodile or something in a big glass tank at the zoo. It's really, you know, it can be really deceiving and you can look at it at different angles and it looks like it's right there, but then you look in the tank on the top and you'll see it's clear across the tank and uh, very, very strange. So if I had a, let's say we do this, let's say we have like a, um, a, a beaker of water and I stick a pencil down in it. If I stick it right down here in the middle, it'll, you'll, you'll be able to see it straight down through the middle. It'll actually maybe look a little bigger because it's kind of refracting and so it kind of magnifies a little bit. But what happens if I take this pencil and I move it like over here to the side? Well, what you end up seeing is, is it the bottom of it kind of like over here. What if I move it over to this side right here? Well, the bottom of it kind of moves, you know, a little further out. It looks like it's kind of almost broken. And the reason for that, if I do a top view of this, if I put the pencil right here in the middle and the lights, here's your eyeball over here, okay? If you have the pencil coming out here, then it's going to just go straight on in. So you'll see the pencil directly kind of below where it actually is. But if I move it over here, okay, now that the light's coming out like this, it's going to refract um, like this, right? It's going to refract away like this. And where do you see it? You, you, you think you see it at the end of this line. So I'd, I'd have like a virtual pencil down on here. So this, this pencil would, that you'd see would be here below, kind of further out than where the actual pencil is. If I move the pencil over here, the light comes like this and refracts this way. You think you see it further over here. Right, so if I, I move it over here, this is where it is really, but it's going to look like it's a little further out there. Okay, so this is uh, you know, how you fish. If you have uh, you're up here and there's a fish down in here, and there's uh, light coming in all different directions, light coming this way, it's going to bend away from the normal. Here's your eye right here. You're going to think that it's going to be right here along uh, this. Um, path right here. You're going to see the fish here. If you try to aim right at that fish, you're going to miss it. You need to actually aim a little bit below. Just some fun things with, uh, with uh, fish hunting.